Extraordinary League, an actual play RPG podcast brought to you by Smash Fiction. I'm Dan Mulcairin, your Game Master. Playing Stitch is Kit Mulcairin. Also cute and fluffy! <laughs> Playing Morden Solus is Colin Mulcairin. When we do these openers, I'm supposed to have a quote that I used all the good ones in Solus Week. I wrote my own thing. It's based on Dr. Horrible because Morden likes musicals and I think that's adorable. And if you don't like it, you can fuck right off. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Neil Patrick Harris would make a pretty good Morden in a Mass Effect movie. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh God, that'd be great. Yes. I think Neil Patrick Harris should play Colin in this match. Yes, movie. 100%. <laughs> Playing Dante Sparta is Liz Logan. Mordana loves me. Mordana loves me not. Mordana loves me. Mordana loves me not. <laughs> Damn it! Stitch, I need another flower! <laughs> <laughs> Playing Nico Minoru is Miles Schneider. Unexplained scene transition! Perfect. <laughs> Previously, your search for the Stone of Grace took you north to Winterfell, where you were ambushed by Dracula, a vampire from another world, and his castle full of mind-controlled subjects. You managed to fend off Dracula's attacks, and you sent him to the proverbial and literal wolves, and now <laughs> your journey continues even further north as you search beyond the wall for Daenerys Targaryen's host, which has made off with the stone. Your travels have finally brought you to the Wall. It comes looming out of the distance ahead of you, an icy edifice stretching further than you can see in either direction, and towering as high as a skyscraper. The light of the sun and the skies reflected in its surface, standing before it, dwarfed to almost insignificance, is a collection of stone towers and timber keeps, all dark in color. As you all draw closer, you can see that the palace is abuzz with movement, although Actually, only a very small portion of those positioned at Castle Black are actually wearing the all-black garb of the Night's Watch. You can see that many, many more are outfitted with armor and tabards emblazoned with the symbol of a black stag's head within a red flaming heart. So, how are you all approaching Castle Black? Um, I forget, do we have mounts? You had mounts coming in, yeah, so you can still have them if you wish. It's probably a much easier way of getting to the wall than walking. Cool. <laughs> Um, or yeah. me making more Pegasus, well, which I can't which you, in fact which you do. can't do anymore. <laughs> you guys, my disguise is finally going to pay off here. I'm a red priest. Also, Liz, you forgot with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, white beard, mind you. I'm going to say to the party, oh my god, is that red I see there? I have red. And that's all I'm going to say. So I assume at this point you have regained some clothing. Oh yeah, you have some red. I have my travel clothes on. That those were my fun clothes. The, these are my travel clothes. Can can I ask Dante? Um, do you have Dracula's cape? Oh well, yeah, yes. yeah. Of course. Dude. Are are you wearing Dracula's yeah, cape? You fucking earned it. No, it's in my um my pack. I've actually draped it over like my horse's butt to look like regal. <laughs> <laughs> A fitting end for Dracula. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna turn. Well, I'm gonna turn to Nico and say you used some sort of. Oh, dang, I was about to say magic. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Use some sort of special ability that you have to gain information about this place, correct? Yes. What can you tell us about that sigil? That is the preferred heraldry of Stannis Baratheon, who is um, a current contender for the throne of this kingdom. Uh, it looks like that because the house he was born into was a stag, but the religion that he currently follows involves fire, and I look meaningfully at Dante. Are we expecting him to be friendly to travelers, or do you not know much else about him? Uh, he has a reputation for not being friendly to anyone. <laughs> I mean, I've got the red, though, right? The red means something, right? That, that might actually yeah. help, yes. Da Dante, why don't you go first? That's a great idea. Thanks, Mordana. Wait, hold on. I flip my hair. I'm like, thanks, Mordana. <laughs> actually... <laughs> The sun glistens off your beard magnificently. Nico, why don't you keep an eye on him? <laughs> Dan, I have a question. Sure. Is my image inducer working? Because as, as I recall, Dracula fucked with it last time. That is correct. It is not working. Okay. Mm. Just curious. Well, I think That's cool. I, I of think all that... of us, I think I look most like I belong here anyway. <laughs> yes. I, think that, I think that me and Stitch are highest priority for people who should have <laughs> No, I'm not arguing that point. Hey, hey, Stitch passed for a dog in Hawaii, okay? <laughs> I want to walk up to the castle, please. Okay. Yeah, they say that they say that uh, the this this would-be king is uh, in fact ruled himself by a priestess of this religion. 
So Dante's appearance uh, might uh, help us in this regard. <clears throat> As Dante approaches the keep, there's a couple of those guards wearing the armor and the tabards with the sigil on that take notice of him. A couple of the other guards, the ones wearing all black, are much more openly skeptical and take a step forward with their hands resting on their weapons. One of them has a sword at his side, uh, the other's carrying a bow. The one with the bow uh, shouts out, That's about far enough, I think. What exactly are you doing here? Stitch kind of looks up and then like, uses his toe to, like, step a little farther. And then he pulls his leg back. <laughs> um, hey, I'm a priest of the red. And then I, like, gesture to my coat. I am here for safe travel through your lovely <clears throat> castle. I'd like to come in. The one with the sword glances behind him up at the towering icy edifice and then looks back at you and says, uh, where exactly are you going? <laughs> right here. The... Lord of Light has placed me here, and I must go into your lovely (coughs) castle. (laughs) One of the uh, one of the other guards, the ones with the uh, with the flaming heart sigil, takes a step forward and says, uh, "Oh, it's fine. Uh, His Majesty has allowed any such travelers uh, welcome, so you, of course, may come in." And they excellent. They shoot the uh, Night's Watchman a look, and the Night's Watch look uh, appropriately cowed and sort of stand down. And uh, you are allowed within Castle Black. Let's get this party started! (laughs) As as we walk down the hall, I'm going to turn to the rest of the League and say, what's our story, like our cover, for why we're going north of the wall? Um, I found you all as orphans. I time-traveled, and then I brought you (laughs) here. Even the dog? (laughs) (laughs) You found the dog as an orphan and time-traveled with it. This loot is from another world. I mean, (laughs) it's not a lie. No, I know. (laughs) You know, and in terms of cover stories covering up the fact that you guys are interdimensional travelers, that one could maybe use a little work. <laughs> we're talk- we're talking about going north of the wall, which is kind of a big deal. The best bet might be to say that Dante is going there and we are f- we the are The Lord of Light is is The uh, Lord of Light is has I'm on a mission yes. wall. Yeah. <laughs> and we are we are basically, we have been assigned to to uh, be bodyguards. I'm personally planning on saying that I come from like east uh huh. Way east. Are any which of us is where Dante you and should I are, come from? Too? I mean, you yeah. and I are both women, though theoretically. So, like, are we bodyguards for this priest? They do things the... differently over there, man. Melisandre's a woman. Yeah. All right. Because we have we have a red priest and two women and a dog. I don't know. What... Uh, no, I mean, we works. could be as we could the be the ways cult. of the Lord. No, yeah. I got it. I got it. We are his cult and we are his followers, yes. and he is leading us north. I, and we yes. I assume follow. I'm somebody's pet. Yes. You're my pet. You're not the one I'm worried yeah. about. You're Dante's pet. Yeah. So you guys are uh, inside the yard of Castle Black, and you can see, much as from what you saw from the exterior, there's a number of people wearing the black garb of the Night's Watch, and a good number of others who are openly displaying the sigils of King Stannis Baratheon. Where is it that you are planning on going? Are you going to try to speak to someone? Or are you just going to try to see if you can pass through the gate? Yeah, so we're not being we're not being led anywhere. We're just been led in. Is is there some sort of like um like emissary or chaplain or something that's like greeting us? Or are we just like no? You have not yet been announced. Uh, they basically okay. just let you into the into the yard, so you guys can kind of go where you wish at um, this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess we're not going to be able to like room here for the night or whatever it is that we want to do without running it through the proper channels i don't think so we i should, think we're gonna have to meet somebody we should probably talk to the lord commander of the watch because he's nominally in charge here all right i'm gonna we'll say hey <laughs> the lord of light commands you to give me food do it now <laughs> <laughs> i have seen it in the flames i'm hungry a steak dinner <laughs> a steak di- <laughs> one of uh king stannis's guards kind of uh, salutes you and says, uh, right away, your holiness, and uh, runs off in the direction of one of the low buildings on the edge of the yard. Excellent. So are you guys uh, retiring to to the, I guess, mess hall at this point? If we are permitted to do so, then yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, you guys walk in, and by the time you arrive, the guard has already sort of spread word of the arrival of another red priest, and everyone there looks very eager to appease Dante. So, Fuck you know, yeah. there's uh, there's people, you know, bringing you the best food that they have, which is not the greatest, but you're being shown <laughs> every courtesy, whatever courtesy these uh, these meager holdings can provide. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. This beef, this beef has been super well salted. No. I can tell. <laughs> with, with the food that's placed in front of me, I want to pretend I'm making a Lunchables pizza. <laughs> I, I rip off a chunk of bread and I'm like putting like little like 
beef chunks as pepperoni. And yeah, I'm th- like, there's no sh- there's no shortage of cured meats up here, so you're you're well and good. I'm uh not that hungry. Oh, Stitch is just throwing everything he can grab in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Morden's going to uh, co- covertly summon his Omni tool and scan foods to see what's compatible with his biology. <laughs> yeah, not a lot as it turns out. But, uh, <laughs> you're, you you manage to uh, narrow down some basic carbohydrates that you think you should be able to digest with minimal difficulty. Stitch looks over at uh, Morden, looks down at Morden's food, <laughs> looks up at Morden, and then, like, while keeping eye contact with Morden, starts putting his food in his <laughs> So um, as you all are enjoying the meal, the first meal, that, the first real meal that you guys have had since you left Winterfell, there's uh, suddenly a hush that falls upon the mess hall as you see this figure enter. Her hair is the color of like copper. Her skin is pale and perfect. And she's wearing this long red dress. And uh, at her throat is a red jewel, which seems to be kind of brighter than the room around it, as though it were like emitting its own source of light. And um, Dante's jaw is on the floor. Oh, God. No, Dante. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> of all the people here. She walks straight up to where the four of you are sitting. Five, I guess, with Geralt. And uh, oh, sort yeah, of nods at... Oh, hey, what's up, Geralt? How yeah. you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> he, he waves his uh, turkey leg at you that presumably he take, took with him from Winterfell. She walks up to the table where all of you are sitting. Sort of uh, nods in greeting at all of you. But uh, when she turns to Dante, she performs a uh, sort of elaborate and deliberate bow and then looks at him very pointedly. Uh, I'm like, <clears throat> I get up and I, I gently like bow my head and I said, I say, uh, you have really nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as nice as mine. Morden vomits in his own mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Her, her expression doesn't change, but you notice like a slight flicker in her eyes and you notice that her, uh, it looks to you as though the ruby pendant around her neck seems to like pulse momentarily. She just says, uh, greetings of R'hllor upon you. Uh, the greetings of R'hllor back on you. (laughs) 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 Okay, Dan, is Dante sitting next to me? (laughs) Uh, that's up to you. Okay, I'm gonna say Dante sitting next to me. I'm just gonna kind of of like scoot the witch arm over to to touch his leg real quick, and I'm gonna say religious studies crash course like under my breath. <laughs> okay, make a psyche check. All right. No, that is a that is a waste. Um, <laughs> oh, good. Even magic can't fix Dante's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, how do I want to do this? Because because I I have to make. If if Miles rolls a failure on a spell casting check, I have to make a turn against him yes. somehow. Liz Liz, I'm going to say that you suddenly basically experience your own personal bar mitzvah. And oh. <laughs> the fuck? you suddenly have a complete and total understanding of the religion of Judaism. <laughs> Um, Please don't offend an entire religion. (laughs) Melisandre takes a step back as though you like slapped her. She says, what is the meaning of this? I'm going to be like, lady, it's been a while since you've been back east where Roller and the Red God and all that stuff. Uh, We've changed things up a little bit and I'm currently on my mission. You see, (laughs) I'm- We call him Roller now. (laughs) Yeah. Dante, Dante, I'm going to require you to uh, sprinkle some Yiddish into your speech. (laughs) God. uh, Oy vey. Oy (laughs) vey. You see, we've changed things up a bit. There's this new guy and his name is David. Under the guidance of Roller and this guy named Yahweh, uh, we have a new thing going on being, where we being have a good to go... Jew saying the name of God aloud. <laughs> We're gonna be burned at the stake, aren't we? <laughs> we have we have to do this new thing where we go on a um, crazy mission to find a burning bush uh, where it normally wouldn't be burning, which means I decided to go to the coldest place I know, which is north of this giant ice wall. Dante, t- to your eyes, Melisandre is looking increasingly verklempt. <laughs> and <laughs> she basically turns around and walks out of the mess hall with great haste. As she does so, she says to a couple of Stannis's guards by the door, don't let them leave. 
and then walks out. While that's happening, I want to look at Stitch and be like, is that pork? No, no, no. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. (laughs) (laughs) But like Stitch like lets it ooze back out of his mouth. (laughs) And then pushes it toward Morden. Dan, in the mess hall right now, is there... Is everybody like enlisted men and soldiers, or is there anyone hanging around who looks to be of a higher status? I will say there's uh, there's probably some people in the Night's Watch that are around. There's uh, a number of people who look to be in neither group, neither Stannis' people nor the Night's Watch. Yeah, I will say that uh, sitting towards the end of the mess hall, very slowly spooning stew into his mouth, seemingly unaware of what just happened, is a very old-looking man with sort of milky white eyes, wearing a black robe and a chain around his neck. Okay. I'm gonna go up to him. Okay. The other guards don't seem to stop you, because, you know, Melisandre just told them to keep you here, but they are very clearly watching all of you very intently as you uh, as you start to move. I go up to... Um to the maester and ma- making my approach obvious so as not to surprise him. And I'll just greet him. I'll say maester. His head swivels in your direction, but his eyes don't focus on you. Yes. I'm sorry. I don't recognize your voice. No, you, you wouldn't. I uh, just arrived with my party here at Castle Black. Am I correct in thinking that you are the, the, the maester of the wall serving the Night's Watch? I certainly am. Maester Eamon at your service. You will have to forgive me for not standing the cold is playing all manner of havoc with my joints today. Oh, please, don't, uh, don't worry yourself on my account. He very gently lowers the, uh, the wooden spoon he was using, uh, back into his bowl and, uh, looks at you patiently. Uh, my name is Nico Minoru. I'm from a place far to the east of here. And I kind of lower my voice. And I'm like, it's urgent that we see the Lord Commander immediately. I see. Might I inquire as to the n- nature of your need? We know of something that might be of great help in the war to come. The important one. Roll me a psyche check with a bonus for persuasion if you have it. Alright, dice. Pulled you out after a long time. (laughs) Didn't do me very well the first roll. We're gonna try again. Yeah, give it the old kit shake. Uh, 85. That's a yellow. Maester Eamon looks down kind of wistfully and sadly at his soup and then back at you and says, uh, It can't wait, I suppose, for me to finish my lunch. I'm afraid not. He sighs mournfully. With glacial speed, he begins to uh, push himself up from the bench where he's sitting, turns towards the the exit and begins to uh, hobble his way, his hands reaching out to uh, grasp onto the tables and chairs as he passes. A little uh, blue paw comes up and goes to grab the old man's bowl of soup, yanks it off the table. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously it's soup, so it just goes flying everywhere. <laughs> Stitch's work <laughs> is done. Uh, as, uh, as you all are approaching the exit, the guards by the door move to bar your path, and uh, they say, you can pass, Maester, but uh, we have our orders. They are not allowed to leave. We have urgent business with the Lord Commander, who, last I checked, is in command at this castle. He says, uh, well, not over us, he ain't. Well, uh, what is what is Aiden? How is there one of Yahweh them? There's just, you. there's just there's just <laughs> one of them. Are, are there two of them, Dan? Yes, yes, there are. Hmm. What one I could neural shock. <laughs> you can covertly neural shock. Oh, he's having a fit. But uh, two of them. I don't. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess I'm gonna raise the arm again. I'm gonna raise the arm again, Star Wars style, and say, "Let us pass as a spe- as a spell." Make your psyche check. I'm going to go ahead and spend karma on this. All right. Okay, well, that is a yellow without karma. Okay, you say, let us pass. And uh, strangely, the two guards respond with, these aren't the droids we're looking for. (laughs) And they begin to go about their business. (laughs) I say, thank you. Very kind of you. And Maester, shall we? He nods and begins to lead you through the, uh, through the yard and into one of the buildings uh, around the edges of it. He leads you into one of the taller towers in Castle Black and uh, up a long flight of winding stairs, which he is, again, moving at a very, very slow rate of speed. And uh, as you guys are passing by windows, you can look down into the yard and you can see that uh, Melisandre is pacing around in the yard, followed by a retinue of guards looking increasingly irritated as she's trying to figure out where all of you went to. (laughs) Yeah. You eventually reach the top of the tower 
and Maester Aemon raises a shaking, wrinkled hand and taps on the door. You're pretty sure he tapped way too quietly for anyone <laughs> inside to have heard. Uh, however, you hear a voice from inside say, Enter! And uh, he reaches down to the big pull ring on the door and uh, very slowly, as is his way, pulls the door open. <laughs> you all step into what basically amounts to an office. There's a number of sagging bookshelves uh, around the perimeter of the room. There's a large window that looks out into the yard. And uh, behind a large desk seated at a chair is a rather youngish looking man. He can't be more than like maybe 16, but his hair is very dark. His skin is relatively pale. There's a shadow of stubble on his chin and jaw, and he's wearing the black of a member of the Night's Watch. And you notice that there's a largish sword uh, resting at an angle on, uh, on the arm of his chair. Eamon takes a step in and gestures toward all of you and says, uh, My Lord Commander, these travelers say they have urgent business to discuss with you. Jon Snow looks up at all of you with a tired and somewhat skeptical look, and uh, he says, Oh, do they now? More business of the Red Lord, I take it, he says, looking at Dante. Uh, Shalom, I can... <laughs> uh... May the Lord of Light uh, blessings be upon thee. I mean you. He says, uh, is there something I can do for you? I sit in the chair in front of him and I kick my feet up and I'm like, I don't know. I'm done talking. <laughs> hey, Mordana. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? Jon Snow is looking up with a look of what the hell are you doing up at uh, Maester Aemon, who is, of course, blissfully unaware and is just sort of off in his own little world. Uh, this man is not, in fact, a priest of the Lord of Light. It is merely a facsimile, a disguise, which uh, seems to not be going so well, which is why I decided to come to you directly. It seems to me, from my very brief observation since I've been here, that there's some uneasiness between your Night's Watch and the King's Men, yes? He glances out the window behind him and says, uh, so I take it you're to blame for the commotion going on in the yard right now. Uh, very likely, my <laughs> lord, yes. My name is Nico Minoru, by the way. He kind of pinches the bridge of his nose between his fingers, and uh, he just says, just what I needed. I see, and why have you come to make so much trouble for me, Nico Minoru? Uh, well, because we are looking for something that you may, in fact, actually need. And I kind of glance over at uh, Maester Eamon and say, we're looking for the Stone of Grace. Maester Eamon seems to perk up at this and sort of uh, does like a little half turn. And he says, uh, oh yes, the Stone of Grace. A wonderful, wonderful gem. I saw it when I was still in my youth. A trip to Winterfell. Silly old egg. He said that he thought he should take it back, but I told him, no, no, no. We don't want to cause an incident after all. And he begins to, to ramble off. <laughs> <laughs> and Jon Snow says, I see, and what, pray tell, besides a presumably childhood memory, is this stone? I honestly don't have a lot of details. A lot of it has been lost in legend and uh, superstition and speculation. I'm sure you know the way of these ancient myths. But we do know that it can help all of us in what's coming from the North. And we do know that it is currently somewhere north of the wall. We need to go find it. Uh, make a psyche roll for me, Nico. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Morden's eyes are, have gone a little wide at this point. It's like, we're just laying it all out there, are Look, we? Look, if any of you guys have a better plan, <laughs> now's the fucking time. <laughs> all right. While this is happening, while he's... Except you. <laughs> <laughs> while he's doing his psyche thing, I want to grab Longclaw and start doing, like crazy like kata and sword forms like just right there in the <laughs> office <laughs> and like i want to i want to do sword forms so beautiful that it's like mind-blowing okay uh what did you get on your psyche check Nico? uh i got a 38 but i as i said i'm spending karma i am spending 30 of that to bring that up to a yellow so john snow <laughs> listens to to nico's story and kind of despite himself is actually fairly convinced that you're not lying to him which he finds to be a little amazing given, you know, the rather preposterous story you just stated. He looks over at Dante, who's uh, wielding Longclaw, and seems like he's about to say something and then just sort of internally decides to prioritize the chaos in his life <laughs> and turns back to Nico. So you haven't exactly answered why it is that you've come to Castle Black. We need passage through the wall. 
the Stone of Grace is north of the wall. Yes. I see. Well, I regret to inform you that passage through the wall to anyone who is not a ranger is, uh, at this point, largely expressly forbidden. We have recently come out of a rather destructive conflict, and uh, at the moment we do not believe that anywhere north of the wall is safe, and I'll not allow the lives of the untrained and unskilled to be put into harm's way. I challenge you to a duel. Uh, ignoring that comment momentarily, <laughs> we are trained and skilled and would do whatever it takes to prove that, that to you. He looks at, at first at Morden and then at Dante, who's still presumably swinging the sword around beautifully. And then he looks back at Morden and says, you believe yourselves to be skilled, do you? It is at this point that Stitch walks in a little late, <laughs> still sopping wet with soup and, <laughs> and, a, and a bowl on his head. <laughs> Uh, Maester Eamon lifts his nose and says, Mmm, something smells delicious. <laughs> Not and sure I'm down with this foppish portrayal of Eamon Targaryen, Dan, but that's fine. He's a little absent-minded. <laughs> he can't remember that he had lunch already. <laughs> and Stitch sort of walks in and, and uh, like, plopped his little butt down on part of, uh, on part of Jon Snow's cloak and scoot, scoots up the ball so he can see him and... And then he starts picking his own nose this time. <laughs> Jon Snow looks down at, at Stitch, looks up at the uh, the rest of you and says, uh, I take it this one's with you. Yes, the dog is with us. He uh, sighs, glances down at several of the pieces of parchment littering his desk, and then says, Hmm, well, if you wish to prove that you can survive north of the wall, there may be something you could do for me. God damn it. A few side quests. <laughs> Fetch, quest. Fetch quest. Hey, Morden, Morden was the one who brought it up. <laughs> That's true. As it turns out, the battle that I mentioned to you has left us crippled in more ways than simply at this castle. Further down the wall is Shadow Tower, which we lost to a group of wildlings led by one particularly vicious warlord by the name of the Weeper. Any men that we have sent back to reclaim the tower have returned headless, sent by the Weeper's own men. We have yet to be able to evict him from the tower. If you are indeed the warriors that you claim to be, capable of surviving north of the Wall, then perhaps you would be capable of dispatching the Weeper and his men as well. Stitch is now climbing the back of Jon Snow's cloak. Okay. Dante, can I see that sword for a second, please? <sighs> it's really pretty, but okay. Thank you. And Stitch kind of plops himself onto Snow's shoulder and just, like, looks at everyone, like... <laughs> um, Stitch, you hear a sudden growl, and you okay. see that uh, emerging from one of the shadowy corners of the room comes a a white wolf the size of a horse. Its upper lip is sort of lifted, exposing some fang as it's giving a low growl at you and glaring at you with red eyes. Stitch kind of blinks at it before he gives his own uh, pulled-back ear, pulled-back lips response. <laughs> <laughs> You, you guys are just great at making friends everywhere you go. I am you, seriously you want, doing my best here. You want to go? I mean, woof. <laughs> <laughs> I use the the sword, and I, I, I gesture at Snow, and I say, uh, if my lord commander permits, and I cut myself with a sword, and uh, when blood is shed, let the staff of one emerge. And then I hand the sword back to him. Jon Snow sees the, the staff of one erupt from your chest, and all of a sudden, Ghost forgets all about Stitch and races over to John's side and is uh, standing there, hackles raised, crouched, ready to pounce in case you do anything else shady. Morden shuts off his image inducer. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> what the oh, fuck? Oh, shit, son. <laughs> John Snow goes reeling back. Oh, and, uh, Dante's boner's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. just, just wait. Just wait. I'm waiting. <laughs> Jon Snow goes reeling back, like, basically almost falling out. If, if the window had been open, he would have fallen out of it at this point. And uh, he's just staring, mouth agape, eyes wide and round, gripping his sword with both hands, sort of at a total loss for what to do. Dante is in the back going, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if you, uh, if you still want us to prove ourselves, that's fine. It shouldn't be a problem, but uh, take our word for it. We're good. <laughs> what are you? I'm going to turn the image inducer back on and flip back to my old self. I see. We're a group of travelers. We go where bad things are happening and we fix them. We're called the League. 
<laughs> Liz is like, no, my my stealth approach, not my stealth approach. I don't think I don't think Dante's crying for his lost stealth approach. There's gonna be a scene in like the post credits where Dante's just in the in a shower, just like trying to clean himself. And he just can't get clean. Uh... As I said, our job is helping people, and if you have are having trouble here, if there's someone who's been killing innocents, then. I suppose we should help out just because it's the right thing to do. Yeah, we can we can solve your problem with the Weaver. You've just revealed yourselves to be, he looks at Nico, sorcerers, and he looks at uh, Morden, demons, and he looks at Stitch. Whatever it is that you are, <laughs> why is it that you believe I would trust you at this point? Because you didn't say there was anything wrong with me, and I'm the leader. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already revealed that to you, so... Clearly, we're not hiding anything else from you. It's kind of all out in the open. No secret. Like what are, a demon, which is evil, tries to hide that that's what it is. If But one that comes clean with that, I mean, maybe it's not so bad. It was a calculated gamble, my lord. And if it didn't go well, th- there were contingency plans. Maester Eamon, who has remained remarkably calm throughout all of this, <laughs> has uh, made his way over to Jon Snow and places a bony, wrinkled hand on John's shoulder, the one without stitch on it, I might clarify. Lord Commander, I do believe it was your father who told you that it was the intent of a man that mattered, not the way he made himself appear to be. And as far as I can tell, and you'll have to forgive me, my eyes and ears aren't what they used to be, but it seems to me as though these travelers have come and dealt with you honestly in a way that they strictly did not need to. Can you think of a reason why they would have any ill will toward you or toward anything that we stand for? Jon Snow looks at Aemon and then at all of you and very slowly lowers Longclaw. That's right. Listen to the old man, emo kid. (laughs) (laughs) I I would say um, the world is far bigger than you realize, Jon Snow. There's a whole lot of night out there and a whole lot of terrors. (laughs) (laughs) I say we're dealing with some that are on a larger scale than you realize. And if you help us out here, it will save a lot more people than just the ones in this castle. He reaches down, begins to dig through the stack of parchment on his desk, and he says, Where did you say the Stone of Grace was located? I say, it was taken by those loyal to Daenerys Targaryen. He says, uh, ah, of course it would have been. He uh, produces a what looks like a recently drawn map and passes it uh, across the table. I've had some of my scouts ranging further and further north. They believe they've located the location of where Daenerys and her followers are currently encamped. If you follow this map, it should lead you there. Now, you do have an interesting choice ahead of you. There are very few paths which can take you through the wall. One is this one here at Castle Black, where, of course, there are a great many who are apparently seeking to, shall we say, detain you. The nearest path, aside from the one here, is the one in the Shadow Tower, which, as I've mentioned, is currently held by the Weeper. I cannot assist you in getting past Stannis' men and Melisandre. They possess a far greater military force than I can possibly muster. So, if you wish to attempt to sneak past them, and you believe that you have the skills to do so, then you can certainly make the attempt. However, if you believe that your martial prowess is still strong enough to get past the Weeper, you may consider traveling instead to the Shadow Tower. Morton's going to say, well, my feeling on this is, if we pass through the Shadow Tower, we can also do some good for these people by eliminating this threat. It does seem that we can kill a couple of wildlings with one stone. Ugh. Seems lame. Dante, were you hoping to get to know that other red priest a little better? Well, since fucking Mordana like left, I don't know where she, she went. Came back? No, I, I got the image juicer back on. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, loot dog? Stitch takes the bowl off his head and like shows it to Ghost, right? Mm-hmm. Soup. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> Ghost looks at the uh, largely empty bowl, cautiously sticks a pink tongue out, and takes a few licks, and then just sort of like shakes his head in disgust. <laughs> there, There is a level of food quality that even a dire wolf will not yeah. stoop to. Yeah, Stitch, Stitch nods. Eh, bad soup. <laughs> Stitch jumps off of uh, John's shoulder, gets sort of in the middle of everyone, and gives a big old doggy shake, shakes that soup right off of himself. 
and, and then uh, looks up at his party and says, where are we going? <laughs> Geralt, any opinion? Oh, is Geralt here? Sure Still? is. Oh, hey, Geralt. <laughs> and I'm like standing there horrified this whole time. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Geralt says, well, I'm certainly not afraid of any group of guards. They could slow us down, though. Suppose we could make our way over to the Shadow Tower. Never afraid to get into a fight. He shrugs and says, uh, I think we have the skills to do either. Guess it just depends on what we want to do more. Morton's going to step forward and say, I don't know about you, but I prefer a situation where we clearly know who the enemies are. Something a bit more white and black. I feel like this castle's filled with nothing but just grayness and politics. And I have little patience for politics. you just described the entire world of this property. (laughs) I say, if there's a castle full of baddies, I'd like a chance to go there and shoot some. Jon Snow leans over and opens the window behind his desk. You can go out here, make your way around the ledge, and you can drop directly outside of the Casa walls. That should be able to allow you to avoid the eyes of Melisandre and her gods. I suggest you get going now before they decide to check up with me. Good plan. Bye. Let's do it. Uh... Come on, Dante. Uh... I mean, sorry, Dante. (laughs) (laughs) All of you climb out one by one, out of the window and onto the sill. You make your way carefully along the ledge that runs around the exterior of this tower past gargoyles and grotesques, because they they spared no expense (laughs) for Castle Black. The ledges are sort of periodically placed in a vertical position up and down the tower, so it's a relatively simple matter for you to just sort of drop from one to the other until you've made it down to the ground. Or, I imagine, in the case of Nico, floating down gently, or I imagine in the case of Stitch, just jumping and letting gravity do its magic. (laughs) Yes, in all cases. Okay. You guys have made it out of Castle Black, you're back in the snow, and you begin to make your way east along the wall, heading in the direction of the Shadow Tower. Now, at this point, I will point out, uh, I believe your mounts are still inside the castle. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, they probably got taken to some stable or something, right? Yes. All right, brief heist. Get the mountains back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're back outside the castle now, right? Yes, you are. Uh, and you just realized you don't have your mounts. Hey, yeah. um, does the, would there be mounts in the Shadow Tower, probably? I mean, there's some bandits yeah, there. there I, I imagine somebody's going to have a horse. Yes. Okay. We have well, to get there first, but yeah. Well, congratulations, Night wa- Night's Watch. You just got some horses. I guess we'll do this leg of the journey on foot and then steal some more when we get to the Shadow Tower. Oh, I love the idea of horse heist, though. <laughs> <laughs> I can try to speed us up. So are you wanting to uh, to just make this journey on foot, or, Nico, you would sounded like you were considering doing something magical? <gasps> make Stitch really big. Make him the biggest horse. Oh my god. That's that inconspicuous. We're gonna ride across the <laughs> countryside on a giant stage. dog with a guitar. On Who's back. gonna know? There's no one up there. The uh, direst wait. wolf. Who's gonna <laughs> fuck with us? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me get more aerodynamic. I removed my coat. <laughs> Y'all want me to try and do that? Let's do it, man. That's great. Alright. Kit, would you like me to spend karma? Oh, I don't, I don't even know, because if you fuck up, Dan's going to make something hilarious happen. So. Fair enough. pocket size Stitch. pocket oh. size Stitch. <laughs> With proportional let's strength see, and regular um, Stitch. Let's see. I uh, Stitch the big red dog. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. Well, no, because that may be really big. Yeah. It was I thought that's the point. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that big? Do we need you that big? Do, who cares what you need? But what do you All want? Right. <laughs> so we're, we're trying All to right. make an elephant-sized Stitch. Are we going to instead make, like, 50 stitch size elephants <laughs> if you mix this up? <laughs> All right. Fine, I'm going to say uh, stitch the big blue dog. Yay! Okay, roll your psyche. That is a green. Okay. Stitch, you are now a blue furred dog, roughly the size of an elephant. Yes. <laughs> uh, your loot is still the normal size. Yay! <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Morton looks up at Stitch and, and really hopes that they don't get into a fight over the DVC. <laughs> <laughs> Stitch, <laughs> Stitch looks down at his at his giant nest and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like takes a moment to Godzilla stomp around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the guards at the wall are going, "What the fuck, you guys?" <laughs> you all mount the giant Stitch, and Stitch begins to run off eastward along the wall. On top of this gigantic stitch, the journey actually takes a good deal shorter than it would otherwise have. And uh, you all are able to reach the Shadow Tower in 
some amount of time because George R. R. Martin's worlds are not specifically, uh, <laughs> you know, precise about the passage of time nor the distance between objects. So we will say that you have all arrived at the Shadow Tower. It is sometime during the night. I will allow Nico and Stitch to decide what the current status of the enchantment is on Stitch. It ju- he just keeps getting bigger. I don't know what's going okay. on. Oh, no. <laughs> Perhaps I should I should have specified on or off. <laughs> off like please. more on, like exponentially on. <laughs> okay, on off, or off, please. Okay, off. All right, on. Stitch has shrunk back to on. his normal proportions. <laughs> But yeah, you can see Shadow Tower in the darkness up ahead, up against the wall. It's smaller than Castle Black is, but you can see that there are the periodic flickering light of fires from some of its windows. And you can see that there are guards with torches who are marching along the walls. Shit, dude, what am I thinking? On. We could just storm the fucking castle on the dog. What's wrong I with me? I did vote on. Yeah. I voted on as well. On. Okay. <laughs> Stitch is still a gigantic dog. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, eat this shit, dire wolves. <laughs> I think it's fair that we give some sort of warning before we charge the castle, give him a chance to lay out. Stitch, arms. you want to give him a warning? Dun, 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 he starts running. <laughs> <laughs> so all of you go charging across the snow, and Stitch leaps over the frozen moat <laughs> that surrounds the Shadow Tower. The wildling guards are screaming and scrambling as this gigantic beast comes barreling out of the night. They're reaching for their weapons, reaching for horns to blow a warning. That all becomes moot, though, as there is a tremendous crashing sound. Stitch reduces a portion of the outer wall to dust, and all of you end up in the inner yard of the Shadow Tower, surrounded by wildlings. Let's roll initiative. Okay, Stitch. Ten. Morden? I'm sorry, nine. I can't math. Nine. Okay, great. (laughs) Morden? Ten. Dante? Eight. Nico? Five. Geralt? Oh, shit. He got an eight, too. You all have come into the inner yard of this place. The wildlings and their screaming and Stitch's thunderous approach from outside the wall gave them just enough time to muster up a very basic level of defense. Waiting for you in the yard are four wildling warriors who are wielding melee weapons of some sort. It's usually spears or hand axes or picks. There are four more wildlings who are wielding bows. There is one wildling who you take to presumably be the Weeper, given that he has these sort of large eyes that look very runny, and he has long white hair, and he is wielding a scythe as his weapon. There's another wildling standing kind of behind him, wearing robes with no visible weapon. Standing off to the side and climbing ponderously to its feet is a gigantic humanoid, wearing furs and carrying what looks like a tree trunk, which it is presumably about to use as a weapon. And finally, also in this yard, attached to a ring via a thick chain around its neck, is a gigantic reptilian creature with two legs and a pair of giant wings <gasps> that extend from it. Is it black? What, what is, the hell? Is it black? Is it green? Uh, it is actually white. Nico, your info dump spell identifies this as a wyvern. Oh, okay. Didn't know they had those. They sure do. Morden, you are up first. I don't trust the robe guy. I don't know. I don't know who he is, but I but I don't trust him. He's like he's like, like that one guy in The Simpsons, you know. No, like I was gonna make the, that exact same. The reference. one small guy who hasn't done yeah. anything in he the hasn't fight done yet. Anything yet. But you know, when he does, it's gonna be really cool. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm gonna leap through the air, do a little aerial midair, throw my dress off, and uh, before I land, I'm gonna toss off um, and incinerate at him. Okay, roll for it. Nope. Okay. His eyes widen as suddenly a bolt of fire streaks across the yard at him, and he dives for cover as it explodes over his head. The wyvern is twisting and pulling up against its chain, but seems unable to move particularly far, certainly not far enough to attack any of you. Stitch, it is your turn. Okay, so you said there's like a bunch of like more mookish ones, right? Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Um... I am, in D&D terms, probably a huge creature, right? Is that correct? I think that's about right, yeah. All right. Can I, if I do, a, like, a sweep, how many can I hit? Uh, I will say you can target one of those groups. So you can either target the four melee warriors or the four ranged warriors. And the melee ones probably ran up to me. Stitch r- raises up onto two ba- onto his two back legs, and then it's like, <laughs> <laughs> axe. His shadow falls across <laughs> his enemies. <laughs> it gives, like a, like, a mini kaiju roar. 
<laughs> and then sweeps his sweeps a big claw at them. I'm going to have you make a fighting roll. Normally this would be a minus four, but because you're so huge, I'm going to say it's only a minus two. All right. So I'm going to take that to a green. Okay. So you will lash out with your paw and basically sweep all four of them off their feet and they go sprawling like broken toys all across the yard. The four <laughs> warriors are out. The one in the robes who has finished diving in terror across the yard looks up at the wyvern and uh, his eyes go blank for a moment. And suddenly the wyvern ceases in his sort of chaotic thrashing oh, around. Shit. Skin changer, I told you. Turns, mm. looks down very uh, focused at the chain and bites it off. Uh, the wyvern is now Warg. free. Dante, it is your turn. I'm going to see this peculiar behavior and with my coat still off... I'm going to run up to the guy with the white eyes and smother him with my coat. He is currently out of running range. You'll have to get through either the Weeper, some of the archers, or the giant if you want to physically uh, attack the warg in melee. That is not my plan anymore. What's, a, like, around the courtyard? There's a lot of sort of miscellaneous material. It looks as though they were sacking the interior of the castle, so there's a lot of, like, broken furniture that's been tossed out. There's a few carts. There's a stables nearby where you can hear horses neighing in panic. I want to go up onto the battlements, start a fire, find barrels, and then roll, like, barrels of pitch into the people, but that seems a little ambitious. I'll say that they probably have siege weaponry set up on the battlements, so they would probably have barrels of pitch up there. I'm going to do that. If you do that, I'll light them up. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So Dante, with your strength, you're able to basically stand up on Stitch's back and then just leap directly from there, the 30 or 40 feet across the yard, and land gracefully on the battlements. And you can see that there are indeed barrels of pitch up here. Yes. So that brings us to Geralt. You know what would be cool? He goes to the warg. And he casts the mind control on him. He's going to try to mind control the mind controller? Okay. What kind of range does that have? Eh, it's probably too far away. Can he hold? Yeah, he can hold. I want to hold. The archers are going to attack now. I'm going to say that Morden, you attracted some attention from them. Stitch, you at attracted quite a bit of attention. <laughs> you don't say. So I'm going to say that one of them is shooting at Morden, and three of them are shooting at Stitch. So Morden. Ooh, he missed you by one. So yeah, that, nice. that arrow goes yeah. like glancing off your force field, not actually damaging it. And then Stitch. Stitch, only one of the arrows hits you. It's not strong enough to damage you given your, you know. My body armor. You're basically incredibly <laughs> tough hide. Yeah. Uh, however, it does like kind of stick in you and it sort of just like stings harmlessly. Uh -huh. uh, but you realize that there's a weird sensation of warmth coming from it. Uh -huh. You need to make an endurance check. Oh, no, no. I feel like I always have to use karma for endurance. I don't want I'm so afraid of, like, instant KO. Take it to a yellow. Okay. You are able to resist the effects of the poison entirely. Ooh. It has no effect on you, and the arrows do no damage to you. Nico, it is your turn. So there is only one remaining large group? Yes, the archers. Okay. Uh, I am going to point my staff at the archers and say chasm with fairly obvious intent. Yes. You're going to give me a psyche check, and this is going to be at a minus four because you're targeting a large group. Oh, shit. All right. Wait, wait. Can I, can I do something to help him as Geralt? Sure. What would you like to do? Can I cast Irden on them, which s slows them, like, completely? So yes. maybe making it easier for him to target, or her to target? That is brilliant. Uh, Geralt, you go ahead and make that roll. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, that's a yellow. Nico, you no longer have a penalty. Sweet. Nine. Okay. Damn yeah, it! that was a shitty roll. Sorry. Nico, the chasm does indeed appear. However, it kind of like ripples out in the wrong direction that you were hoping it would. So it actually goes away from the archers and you see it basically like zigzags across the yard and beneath one of the towers in the castle. You hear this ominous creaking sound as you see the entire tower begins to tip over. <laughs> um, actually, sorry? it's kind of cool, I guess. I need everyone except for Dante, who's not in the yard, to make an agility check. Dante goes, God damn it, Nico! <laughs> Geralt green. got a green. Green for Nico, green for Geralt. Yellow. Yellow for Stitch. Morden's gonna um, do something a little weird. 
He's going to pull out his portal gun, make a portal at a nearby wall, like across the yard, and then point the portal gun up at the tower as it's falling at him. And at the last second, he's going to make a portal in the section of, wall, of tower that's about to hit him. Wait, did you do that? Yeah. No, you do that. I'm not, I'm not saying can you do it in portal. I'm saying can you do it right now? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> More than I am going to need you to roll for that. All right. And I'm using karma. I spent 39 karma and make it a yellow. Okay. So Geralt and Nico... You guys manage to get out of the way of the main tower, but you get winged by some of the rubble, and each of you takes 30 damage. Damn. Oh, that's me. That's oh, it for you? shit. Yeah. Okay, Nico goes down. Stitch manages to avoid the tower altogether, mm. which is very impressive given his increased bulk, although now that Nico's down, you shrink back to your normal size. Ah. Uh, Nico, you did manage to take out the archers, which is nice. Oh, good! <laughs> uh, and you also managed to wing the giant and the wyvern. However, the weeper and the warg managed to escape unhurt. Okay, it is the weeper's turn now. He scrambles up one of the broken walls of the tower now lying strewn about the yard and stands silhouetted in the night air raising his scythe over his head as he emits a war cry and charges at Morden. Uh, Morden, you manage to fend him off as he swings his scythe again and again in vicious cuts at you. And with an earth-shaking crunch, the giant pulls himself free of the rubble, turns, sees the now tiny stitch, and begins to stomp toward him. Uh, Stitch, it raises up its foot and brings it down, and you reach up your tiny arms and catch it, holding it above you. Morden, it is your turn. Well, we're gonna need to get that rubble off of Nico, but I think that's more of a, I think that's more of a Stitch job. Uh, a little busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, so I'm just gonna, you know, dodging all of his, like, sickle slices, I'm gonna sort of dive off to the side, um, lift up my hand cannon and just take a couple shots at him once I've put a little bit of distance between me and him as I'm kind of running backwards. Sure, go for it. That is a yellow. Uh, you bullseye him. You want to hit him anywhere in particular? Could I hit him in the wrist of the hand that's holding his scythe to ma- so maybe he'll drop his weapon? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to have him make an endurance check. So he made his endurance check. So I'm going to say he's going to be attacking at a penalty, but he is still able to use his scythe with both hands. He lets out a roar partially of surprise when you use your gun on him. But uh, at this point, he's sort of like descended in too far deep into his battle rage to really be able to process what he's feeling as anything aside from anger and pain and rage. The wyvern lurches out of the rubble that partially buried it, lets out a roar, and tries to snatch Dante from atop the wall. Asshole. Dante, that's a hit, but you can try to dodge it or block it if you wish. Dodge! Oh, shit. Uh, it's just a green. Okay, that's all you needed. You managed to jump out of the way as its jaws clamp down on the stony battlements instead of on your sweet, sweet man flesh. Stitch, it is your turn. Is that, is that fucker still trying to bring his foot down on me? The giant? Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, describe him? Basically, it's a gigantic humanoid. Like, okay. probably somewhere in the range of maybe 18 feet tall or so. Very muscular. Its facial features are sort of like ugly and distorted, wearing rags and carrying a giant tree trunk, which is using as a club. Yeah, I, I've thrown bigger than you. <laughs> um, can, I, can I um attempt to throw this motherfucker? Sure. <laughs> into, into space, Team Rocket style? <laughs> yeah, you can give me a strength check for that. All right. Come on, Dice, don't fail me. Oh, you are beautiful. 99. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Team Rocket blasting off again. Yeah, you basically like shift your hand so that you're just grabbing his big toe. And using that, you spin around, spinning him around, and then toss him well outside the wall. So just like, stupid head. You're thinking he's probably going to land somewhere around the vicinity of King's Landing by the time he touches down. The giant nice. is officially out of the fight. <laughs> Can I- yeah, I'll say. Damn. Can um can I use my move action to run over to Nico? Because I'm going to start trying to get her out from under that stuff. Yeah, sure. Okay. You you move over to her, but you won't be able okay. to do anything active until uh, next turn. That's fine. Okay, so uh, it is the warg's turn. He is going to take cover as he continues to puppet the wyvern. Dante, it is your turn. Okay, lighting uh, barrels of pitch, and then we'll be throwing said barrels of pitch at uh, the weeper and warg. Oh, okay, so you're ignoring the wyvern for now? Yeah, fuck the wyvern. Okay, uh, these guys are at a 
fairly considerable range. Your strength is pretty great, so I'm just going to give you a minus one penalty for this. But it's it's going to be a strength check. All right. Oh, I should have said karma. Yeah, it's a light shit. Okay. Oh no, who got burning <laughs> pitch on Shit! That? So when we told John we were trained and skilled... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that there is now a large section of burning pitch in the center of the battlefield, which is slowly beginning to grow as the pitch slowly spreads out. So it's like a party. It's yeah, a exactly. It's Geralt's turn. How close is Geralt to said warg? He can close and then he can do a ranged attack on the warg, but he's not close enough to do a melee attack. Okay, so what about his mind control? Geralt's mind control? Yeah, can he cast that? Yeah, he he could basically just, like, run at the warg, and then when he gets close enough, use mind control. That's fine. I want to do that. Yeah. All right. Uh, roll Psyche. Oh, hell yeah. He got an 88. That's got to be a yellow. Geralt runs over and encants the spell for Axie. And basically, Geralt is now in control of the warg, who is in control of the wyvern. <laughs> Geralt's feeling this real weird, distorted sense of himself and reality all around him. Oh, uh, but, so cool. So Geralt is basically now in command of the wyvern. Nico, you need to make an endurance check for me. Yeah, that's green. Uh, you haven't stabilized yet, but you are not dying any more than you were a second ago. Oh, good. <laughs> it is the Weeper's turn, and he's going to continue his uh, campaign of slicey uppiness on Morden. Uh, this time, instead of targeting your center of mass, Morden, he's going to go for one of your arms. Uh, he's going to hit unless you would care to dodge or block. I would care to. Okay. I would care to dodge. Uh, got a green. Very good. Yeah, you do indeed manage to dodge out of the way of his attack. That brings us to you, Morden. Do I have any uh, any sense of how badly that hand can is hurting him? I mean, you you hit him pretty solidly, um, okay. but he's he looks like he can take a lot more punishment. Okay, um, I'll hit him with an incinerate. Okay, great. Roll for it. That is a mighty five. Okay, great. So that is a white. Yeah, no. Uh, why can't I hit anything with these fireballs? Basically, you raise up your Omni tool <laughs> at him, but uh, he brings his scythe down, and you have to like yank your hand back at the last second in order to avoid getting de-handed and your uh, incinerate goes wide. There's right. going to be fire everywhere. Gonna, yeah. Not where it's supposed to be, no. but everywhere. I was going to say, the only thing this yard needed was more fire. <laughs> and it I can it fix now. that! It is the Wyvern's turn, and he's going to try to eat Dante again. But wait, I'm he's controlling it. Oh, you're right. My bad. Liz is controlling Geralt, who's controlling <laughs> so I get. Controlling. Do I get to go as the, act as the Wyvern? You do. What would you like the yes. Wyvern to do? I want it to land straight on top of the Weeper. Great. Just straight down. Roll the wyverns fighting, which is remarkable. Oh my god, this wyvern got 99. Awesome. Nice. So uh, as the weeper is continuing to scream wordless obscenities with spit, you know, <laughs> leaping in, in sprays from his lips, Morden glances up, his, uh, his eyes widen, and he dives to the side as this wyvern comes down. And with a <laughs> The splat, shadow slowly creeps. <laughs> yep. And the weaver is crushed into a paste beneath oh. the wyvern. The weeper is out. <laughs> Stitch, it is your turn. This is just going to be a good rescue doggy and start, like, digging Nico out of there. All right, cool. So I'm going to say... Oh, thanks, kid. I'm going to say that you have stabilized Nico. She is no longer in danger of dying. He, he kind of, like, lifts her up and is like, Nico, and pats her on the face. <laughs> get up. You must get up. Oh. Oh, you guys are out of active enemies because the only remaining enemies are mind controlled. So, oh god, uh, cool. you have won this fight. I will say, uh, what are you planning on doing with the remaining survivors? By which I mean the warg and the wyvern. Can we like command the wyvern to like fly the hell away, and then maybe neural shock the warg? You absolutely can. I'll, I'll oh, say that that's idea. how it goes. By the end of it, you have a bunch of dead or unconscious wildlings. You're able to chain up the ones that are still living. But by the end of it, you guys have command of the Shadow Tower, and more importantly, of the gate which leads through the wall and to the north end of the wall, which is, of course, where the next leg of your quest lies. Extraordinary League is produced by Miles Schneiderman, with logo design by Colin Mulcairn. 
Special thanks to Kevin McLeod for our theme song, which is called Motherload. You can find his works at www.incompetech.com. You can follow the Smash Fiction Podcast on Twitter at Smash Fic Podcast and search for us on Facebook and Tumblr. Subscribe on iTunes, and if you leave us a good review, we shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. If you have any suggestions, feedback, or other contributions, send them to us at smashfictionpodcast at gmail.com and help us continue the fight. That was some crazy chutzpah, Nico. Chutzpah? Are you just, like, looking up words now on Google or what? Uh, don't be silly, Stitch, or a klutz. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs>